this decision brings to an end the commission's enforcement action against PG&E stemming from its role in the 2017 and 2018 Northern California fires. Uh, a grim chapter in PG&E's history that had devastating consequences. Our investigation found that PG&E's misconduct caused 15 of the wildfires, resulting in unprecedented damage. Over 100 people killed, 25,000 structures destroyed, hundreds of thousands of acres burned, and the destruction of an entire community in paradise. The wildfires, as we know, also led PG&E to declare bankruptcy, which is an extraordinarily disruptive process for a company that provides essential utility services to millions of residents. Of course, for the victims of the fires, the damage, the pain, the trauma is, is ongoing. In this case, prior to evidentiary hearing, PG&E reached a settlement with two parties the advocacy section of our safety and enforcement division and the coalition of California utility employees. The settlement provided for $1.625 billion in disallowed costs. Shareholder, uh, these are costs that shareholders would bear that otherwise PG&E would seek to recover from customers and $50 million in various system enhancements. The total penalty amount was $1.675 billion. When the commission approves a settlement, we look to see if it's reasonable in light of the whole record, consistent with the law and in the public interest. Those are the findings we need to make to approve a settlement. At the end of February, ALJ Judge Park issued a presiding officer's decision reviewing the settlement uh, no, the decision is known as a pod, and the pod modified the settlement in several important ways, which were entirely appropriate. First, it added an additional $64 million in system enhancements. These will ensure that PG&E can fully implement the findings of the various root cause analyses relating to the wildfires that the settlement mandates that it undertake. Second, the settlement added an additional $198 million in disallowed costs, additional costs that shareholders would have to bear. This is justified because of the original $1.625 billion of disallowed costs in the settlement, $900 million related to wildfire-related costs that pg e may very well not have been entitled to recover from ratepayers in the first place. Third, the pod imposed a $200 million fine that was payable to the general fund. Fund. A fine is clearly appropriate here given the unprecedented scale and the scope of harm from the wildfires that pg e caused and because fines convey unique societal opprobrium. And finally, the pod stipulated that tax benefits that PG&E will realize from the expenditures it is required to undertake by the settlement will go to ratepayers, not shareholders, to the extent allowed by IRS rules. And this, these benefits will be realized in future years when the benefits are taken by PG&E. PG&E appealed Judge Park's pod. We here just wanna stop and, and comment on, on the appeal. Given PG&E's strongly professed recognition of the need to dramatically transform its culture, its approach to safety, and its professed commitment to working collaboratively in the future with its regulators, the stridency of pg es appeal was highly unfortunate and indeed deeply disappointing. I won't go line by line, but I want to highlight two things in particular. One is that pg e vigorously disputed its potential liability from the fires. 
These protests were particularly disingenuous, given that, among other things, PG&E was at the same time pleading guilty to 84 counts of involuntary manslaughter in connection with the campfire. This is conduct that the Butte County DA likened to, quote, reckless arson. Second, PG&E relentlessly attacked ALJ Park for revising the settlement and hyperbolically argued that modifying the settlement threatened to undermine the commission's regulatory compact with utilities. In fact, the settlement that was reached only included a subset of the parties in the proceeding and was vigorously contested by the others. And in these circumstances, the commission does not accord any special deference to the settlement, but exercises its independent judgment to ensure that the settlement is in the interest of the public and all parties. And this type of independent commission review is especially important in a case of this magnitude and public consequence. Having said that, the commission settlement rules do require that settling parties approve any proposed modification to a settlement. And this is appropriate to ensure that the settling parties do not have conditions imposed on them without their agreement. pg its appeal specified two issues that it said were unacceptable to the company. Number one, it requested that the $200 million fine be paid out of the trust established in the bankruptcy case to pay wildfire victims and that it not be paid out of any other source from the company. And second, PG opposed the modification to pass all tax savings associated with the expenditures required by the settlement onto ratepayers, alleging that the return of tax benefits on capital expenditures to ratepayers would violate IRS rules. In response to this appeal and subsequent filings by PG&E, I initiated two processes, one uh, a request for review and then the second a decision different. These are different procedural devices that the commission can employ in cases like this. And in particular, I recommended making two changes to Judge Park's pod. First, with respect to the $200 million fine I rejected PG&E's proposal to pay the fine out of the victim's trust because it would be entirely inappropriate to pit the payment of fines to the PUC against the claims of the wildfire victims. At the same time, however, PG&E raised the credible threat that paying fines from sources other than the victim's trust could jeopardize the funding commitments that it had received and that it needs to exit bankruptcy. So given the unique circumstances of the bankruptcy, PG&E's need to exit bankruptcy by June 30th for wildfire victims to receive the benefits of the trust, assuming it's approved by the federal bankruptcy process, and also the need for PG&E to exit bankruptcy by June 30th in order to gain access to the state's wildfire liability fund I recommended that the payment of the fine be permanently suspended. Second, I clarified that consistent with IRS rules, the tax benefits from the settlement that pass through to ratepayers will be limited to operational expenses only, and that the tax benefits from capital expenditures will go to PG&E shareholders. Again, that's consistent with IRS rules. Although the tax, the benefits that will go to ratepayers are uncertain, PG&E estimated that they could be as much as $425 million. After initially opposing part of my recommendations, PG&E ultimately accepted all of them and the modifications, as did the other settling parties. So as a result, the decision before us today consists of the following a record penalty of $1.937 billion. This is money that shareholders will pay, and that includes $1.823 billion in disallowances for wildfire-related expenditures, $114 million 
in system enhancement initiatives and corrective actions to further protect public safety and a $200 million fine that is permanently suspended. I want to, I recognize that a permanent suspension of the fine is deeply unsatisfying to many. Several interveners strongly oppose this provision. I share this frustration. I think it's important to keep in mind, however, that this penalty action is only one of many aggressive steps that the commission's taking to hold PG accountable for its actions and to help prevent future misconduct. I also want to emphasize that it is an extremely rare set of circumstances that justify departure from our normal penalty rules as we've done here. Finally, the decision includes the requirement that pg and customers benefit from the tax savings from operational expenses and that shareholders do not. That's the decision. I want to express my deep appreciation for the outstanding work of our safety and enforcement division here, both in investigating the fires, developing extensive reports of violations, and working extremely diligently to negotiate a settlement that provided for meaningful benefits, meaningful penalties and public benefits. I think with the modifications of, uh, proposed and hopefully approved today, the settlement's even stronger and will do more to hold pg and accountable for its failure to make safety a top priority. Finally, I wanna express thanks for those who've worked on this case, Judge Park for how really how outstanding work from start to finish, her super sharp legal mind, her fast, thorough, clear, and incisive writing, maintaining a, a calm demeanor throughout. I want to thank the legal division for its excellent analysis. My advisor, Oberg and Sean Simon for their extremely hard work. My Bagley Keen partner, President Batcher. And finally, I want to give out a special shout of appreciation to Marty, Margie Lascano in the legal division who helped process uh, my decision different and today's decision as well, stepping up to the plate to really help out. So with that, I will close and I ask for your support on this decision.